There is a rare lunar eclipse happening later this evening. It's kind of going to be early tomorrow morning, but essentially overnight. And this doesn't happen all the time where it's going to turn the lunar surface red. It's going to be blood red. Here to talk with me about it is NASA's Dr. Kelsey Young. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. Happy Eclipse Day and happy almost Pi Day. I know, almost Pi Day. Okay, which is March 14th for those uh, right. who aren't nerding out like the rest of us. <laughs> um, so can you tell me what can we expect to happen this evening? Yes, so eclipses of all types are pretty spectacular because any eclipse requires quite a few celestial bodies to be like exactly lined up. So for a lunar eclipse, you've got the sun, the earth, and the moon. And so the earth blocks just enough of sun's light where just the sun can make it through like the very upper atmosphere of the earth. And essentially what you have happening is that all of the sunsets and sunrises on earth are broadcasted at the same time onto the lunar surface, which turns it bright red. And it's why you sometimes hear it referred to as a blood moon. Oh, and we want to be clear. So this is happening early morning of March 14th, which usually most people would be sleeping around what time if someone wanted to check this out, should they be getting outside? In the central time zone, totality starts around 1.26 a.m. and lasts until about 2.30 a.m. So you have an hour to get outside. Um, so 2 a.m. is kind of like the peak right in the middle of totality. Central time. Okay, but you want to be on time. You don't want to miss it. So a few minutes before 2 a.m. is probably... <laughs> what, you, what you want to shoot for. And so um, what does NASA do when something like this happens? It's really exciting. I mean, just as human beings, first of all, the moon is something that connects all of us, right? So everybody has their own experience and their own relationship with the moon. Uh, I have small kids. They have their own relationship with the moon, right? Um, but as NASA scientists, I specifically study the moon. I'm a lunar scientist and geologist. So this is just an extremely exciting time, specifically for this lunar eclipse. One of our commercial partners has a lander on the moon um, that's taking data actively right now. For them, it will look like a solar eclipse for that lander. So we have data that's going to be able to be taken from the lunar surface during this eclipse. And it also just gives us a really great opportunity to reflect on this era of lunar exploration that we're in. If Swifty fans were in our lunar exploration era here at NASA. Um, and I work on the Artemis program to send astronauts to the moon. And it's just a really exciting time to think about the moon and have it take center stage for us. I mean, it's really cool. So can we talk a little bit more about what NASA is going to actually do with all this information and data that they're gaining? What is it going to help them do? So scientifically, of course, I have to start with the science as a NASA scientist. <laughs> um, we're learning a lot more about the moon. I mean, of course, we went there with Apollo. We, you know, we had astronauts walk on the surface of the moon during the Apollo program. The last time we did that was 1972. Um, those samples allowed us to understand a whole lot more about the moon. But now here we are decades later with better technology. We have the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter in orbit around the moon taking amazing data and Artemis astronauts will help close a lot of knowledge gaps we have about the moon and our own planet. By visiting the moon, we learn a lot about our own planet as well. So it's just an exciting dynamic time and it's we're well poised to have our Artemis crew members contribute to this really critical body of scientific knowledge about the Earth moon system. And then you also mentioned that it was a commercial partner that is also currently on the moon with um, with technology. What does this information, how does it impact them? Yeah, so NASA has partnered with uh, quite a number of commercial companies who are working to get landers with NASA science payloads to the surface of the moon. Um, so there's just a lot of activity in and around the moon right now. Um, one of those landers did land successfully recently and has active instruments con collecting science data on the surface of the moon right now. Uh, lunar exploration is is pretty hard and landing on the moon is pretty hard. And so having partners makes it a lot more attainable. And so we've really been enjoying fruitful par partnerships with our, our commercial partners. And what kind of things would a commercial partner be researching? Um, so in this case, the commercial partner has a lander that has NASA payloads on it. So it's a partnership to deliver payloads to the surface of the moon so that science scientists, NASA scientists, and external community scientists can learn from the data. And um, what are payloads? Oh, 
instruments, <laughs> okay. so there's cameras or radiation detectors or mass spectrometers or seismometers. There are a whole host of data types that can be collected from the lunar surface. Okay. And then how, w what happens once uh, this mission is complete or it's successful scientists then take that information? What, what, just what happens? <laughs> Uh, yeah, so it feeds the body of lunar knowledge. I mean, we have a lot of really critical high priority science questions that we have left to answer about the moon. And one thing I like to tell people that I don't think it's like readily apparent when you look up at the moon at night is that what the moon has experienced over its history, our planet has experienced. And here on Earth, we have plate tectonics, we have oceans, we have forests, we have a lot of things that obscure the geologic record that don't exist on the moon. And so we can actually access big chunks of our own planet's history on the moon that we can't on earth. So by visiting specific parts on the moon, which we're targeting with our crewed missions, we'll actually be able to learn something about the history of our own planet that is unattainable here, which I just find extremely inspiring. Oh, and it's just fascinating. I always tell my coworkers, this is the final frontier. Yeah. This is the space that we just don't know a lot about. But at the same time, we do know a ton about it, but we still don't know a whole bunch about it, which I just think makes that so cool. Is there anything else you want to share about this lunar eclipse? Yeah, I will tell your viewers that and listeners that... Um, some of you may have seen the solar eclipse last year. Um, and for that solar eclipse, you had to find special glasses to look up at the sun during the solar eclipse. That is not the case here. You do not have to have any special technology to look at the eclipse tonight. Just clear eyes and clear skies and maybe an alarm clock, depending on your sleeping schedule. Um, so we just like to let you know Nope, don't need to track down anything special. Um, just get away from light sources if you can, because it'll just look a little bit more vibrant and bright uh, and just find a place where you can look up at the moon. Oh, this is awesome. Dr. Kelsey Young. And you said your title is a lunar scientist and geologist with NASA. That's right. And specifically, I'm the Artemis II lunar science lead. Um, Artemis II is the first mission that will send humans uh, to the moon for Artemis. So that will launch next year. That is so cool. I know your family must be very proud of you. <laughs> and you have an Indiana connection at Notre Dame, huh? That's right. I went to undergrad at the University of Notre Dame, as did my dad and as did my husband. So go Ooh. Irish. <laughs> go Irish. That's absolutely amazing. We certainly appreciate your time hanging out with us this afternoon. And uh, again, that's happening March 14th around 2 a.m. if you want to catch it. Now, if you happen to miss this or maybe you're catching this interview a little bit after March 14th, you can also find more information on our website, WTHR.com. And of course, NASA always has more information as well. Dr. Kelsey Young, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. All right. Bye-bye. Have a great day. You as well. Thanks very much.